Stat boy. Where do we have him? Statman. Is that who's that? You. Me. Cool. Statman. Uh so he well, uh the first thing is that he uh makes the voice lines better on this map, so that makes him automatically <laughs> S tier, obviously. Uh, uh second thing to note, um he has he has the problem of eminent domain actually completely messes up his satellite spread because basically uh it's a race condition where anytime a satellite is uh destroyed by Amon, it has a roughly fifty fifty of fifty percent of the time it will, you know, be put into respawn mode as normal and then respawn after that. And then the other half of the time, that satellite just dies. Permanent dies. Ouch. So with that, plus pure fire beam, which will be, you know, vacuuming up all your satellites. Yeah, you're gonna have a really hard time getting satellite spread going, uh, which is gonna suck because even though, uh, like, even though P2 Gary can manage to handle the mobility thing with Ever, you know what we won't be able to handle is the fact that your army can't fight anything because your army needs set zones to win fights. Uh, so you will part. need you will need to bait pure fire beams with overlords here. You'll probably need to bait pure fire beams with overlords. You have terrible clear for the first two void rifts. Like it's it's absolutely awful. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. And unlike uh, unlike Kerrigan, where it's like it's it's absolutely awful dealing with the first two void rifts, but also you can just spit out a million spine crawlers without consequence because as soon as Kerrigan spawns, you're completely stable. With Gary, you need to turn him into Super Gary, and also he's an air unit, which means he doesn't get to tank things, and also he's like kind of more a bit more tankiness oriented than damage oriented. So like you can actually run into the problem of, and then the void rifts just kind of spawn shit that. Killed your workers while you were trying to kill rivers. So, yeah, that that's not great. So basically, Stepman's got a lot of problems here, and the only thing he has going for him is, wow, that's one strong Gary. <laughs> that that's that's all he's got going for him. I would say honestly, I could see Stepman in C tier, but B tier might be more reasonable. But I could see him in, in no, 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 no. Uh, bad. No, let's let's do this objectively. Is Stat Boy better than Nova? No, I don't think so. Is no. Stat Boy better than Artanis? No, Death. No. Is Stat Boy better than Arturus? No. Is Stat Boy better than Rainer? Maybe. Maybe. So, where does that put him? I, a C tier. Like I said, I said I could be convinced of B, maybe, but. I would put him in C. There you go. Let's uh, uh let's move on. Uh, how about you, Eveling? So I am on a completely different spectrum. I have him in S, easily convinced to A. But I'm, as many main who know me know, I rarely play P two. So P one is not gonna suffer from the imminent domain problems, and it can you can just. Flood, flood Amon with lings and lings, banelings, and at that point, it start you start playing normally um, as a P1 player. And then the other aspect is from Voidris that I mentioned earlier. Voidris, you don't get biomass, essence, XP, but there are some commanders that just based off of kills, you can get something out of it. P3 allows you to get that something. You get that the best oil for units, and you're gonna have from Voidris a constant trickle of units. So you're gonna be fueling, fueling Ultralis or whatever you want to use. And P3 doesn't have that issue of being super, super slow, but you still have the power of regular. So, what do you think about that stick spender? Uh, no, I think I think that sounds like even. Even if you try to argue you have Zergling Vainlings to overwhelm Amon, that sounds like bad Mengsk game plan, basically. Uh, well, I, cheaper. I, I, I Way cheaper. That... Much cheaper. 
recycling is a huge thing. Recycling is a huge thing. Go green, but folks. you also get you also get a lot less damage per baneling than you get per Manx trooper. They also don't have the option of like Manx troopers. It's like they can shoot through everything, and also if they happen to die, they also explode. Uh, you also don't have any like fast global map mobility to get to aside from blue zone you don't have any fast little map mobility to get on top of rifts and if you're using p1 then you go from having big strong super strong hero unit to having sad poor hero unit that isn't that good so you're basically saying that you're going to use uh units just units to try and keep up with everything and get on top of void rifts those units don't get to have green zone most much of the time because they're using blue zone to get between rifts yeah, I don't know. I'm not convinced that's good at all, to be honest. And I would also note that Stetman is the other person who hasn't sold this along with Jimmy. Everyone else has. Ooh. Uh, I, I think that Stetman is quite poor here, and I, I would stick to that, because even if you are using P1 so that you don't have to worry about the eminent domain problem, well, one, you're using P1, so that's a big power loss, but also... Um, he just doesn't have any like particularly good answer to void risk. I neither neither the early void risks nor dealing with distant void risk late game. Both of those are things that Statman just sits there like, I don't know what to do about that. Uh, throw more units at the issue, hope I could just punch through the entire base. <laughs> Once you have enough investors to just throw enough units at it, it'll eventually go away. <laughs> <laughs> Overwhelming with numbers. Over I mean, overwhelming with numbers. If you clear, if you can clear, clear the area all the way to the void risk, then that's that's one but way to do it. But the uh, the haven't soloed this yet kind of resonates with me because I do see the early game as a problem with that boy. The early game sounds absolutely painful, even a regular brutal. If you're if you if your base gets hit by Zerglings early game, you you might lose stuff before Gary even comes out. So, I, I'm I'm more inclined towards C than A, even with the first prestige. But is B a compromise? If you if you use the first prestige of Gary, is that B worthy or still C? No, it's still C. What do you think? I see absolutely, going? like honestly. I would be able to... Yeah. I would argue that at least even Jimmy at least has the every time the Hyperion comes off cooldown, that should be a board wipe on the Void Rifts. If the Void Rifts get out of hand late game, Stepman's got no response. If the Void Rifts spawn far back, Stepman's only response is to punch through the entire base, which is difficult and good luck because that is not reliable that that's going to work. And also, if it does work, especially if you're using Infestors for it, it's going to be so slow that by the time you get to that rift, the next set of rifts will have spawned. And early game, yeah, early game, Jimmy and Stepman are about in the same boat. But late game, Jimmy's, like, got a much better footing than Stepman, honestly, I would say. What do you think, Eveling? I would be willing to compromise on B. But I think we're kind of missing a major thing. So I, I get it. Yeah, Hyperion comes out. It's a board. It's a board wipe on rifts. But when Gary comes out, you have an air unit that can traverse over a mist of opportunities. It has a lot of areas where you can just bypass bases just by by being an air unit. So if you got a rift that's like in that in between area between the second bonus. There is that big wall that you can just go over and and pew pew on the rift, and you I don't think... have to send your army through. So you're saying that you're gonna you you would use non a regular Gary on the first prestige to get to those far rifts. Seems kind of slow, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. It's it's a little yeah it's a little slower, and that's that's that would be I don't see... fine in the B range. The, the, it sounds a lot worse than Nova having a hero unit that's uh, considerably less slow about that, and also she has a better army to fall back on. That actually kind of sounds worse than the Hyperion, if we're looking at it objectively. It's, a, it's at least as 
bad as waiting for her to appear to spawn every five minutes. Also, at the same time as the at the same time as the four minutes when Gary spawns, technically Jimmy gets a power spike then because his banshees spawn and his banshees have a lot of DPS. Oh yes, <laughs> a lot of damage. Uh, the big point when Stepman gets to pull ahead is that at five minutes, Jimmy probably doesn't want to instantly call down the Hyperion unless he's uh, got full Hyperion cooldown master and is intending to line up timings, in which case, actually, he wants to very much instantly call down the Hyperion because then nine minutes is about when you'll need it again. So you use it at five minutes instantly, and then you have full mastery into Hyperion cooldown, so you use it at nine minutes again when you need it for the second set of bots. And then now at six minutes, what, you're you're out of top bar for the next two minutes, and then you'll have Banshees, but Two minutes without top bar. Those two minutes now that's have, where Jimmy basically runs those, problems. Those two minutes have two void of spawns, the five twenty and the six fifty. Yeah, which is uh which is a problem. Yes. Uh however, uh I mean it's not like Stepman can offer a solution to those problems because all he offers is, well, I have a Gary. Uh I don't have bunkers to defend the home base, so I'm probably using spine crawlers. I'd I'd say you're probably using spine crawlers for pair to deal with the trickle while you have Gary running around trying to kill Voidress. Spine crawlers or lurkers? Uh, you're not gonna have lurkers at that point yet, realistically. But yes, lurkers are good if you can eventually. No, I get mean, them, early, I guess. yeah, early in the game, yeah, you're not. Mid game, yes. Yeah, the mm. more the more this is but, going, uh, some... the more I'm convinced of C than even B. Because it it sounds like well, I... the only options Gary has is be really good. Let me just really, throw really one more thing. Yeah. So, before Gary comes out, if you're playing P1, you can spread your. I mean, with with maybe just like five points into Stedlite, uh cooldown, you can spread it pretty far. So you can get to some odd places with it, and from there you got Gary to. You can you can teleport Gary to that to that area and take care of it. I mean, you have the Stedlite spread. And it's not going to go away. I think the issue is even if you can teleport right. Gary there, his DPS isn't quite enough to de delete it in a timely manner. And there are two of them for every ninety seconds in the early game. Fair. That's that's fair. Yeah. I Basically, think. the 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 reality is getting satellites to give you vision everywhere with P one is basically the only thing I can see that is an argument that makes him better at anything at all than the B-tiers. Like, the B-tiers are basically better at everything, it feels like to me. Uh, and that one thing that makes him good is, yeah, he can get Vision, which makes him have great synergy with Karax. Yeah. I don't... Uh, so I guess if you're if you're uh, trying to say, hey, Karax, carry me, I will give you map hacks so you can Orbital Strike Rifts. That's yeah. actually very good. Something like that. Assuming the Karax is carrying. I, I love I love it's extremely Stat Boy. good if the Karak is wow. carrying. I love Stat Boy as much as anyone. Well, well I guess maybe the... except Donnie Vermillion, but I I just don't see him being any better than C here. Because yeah, uh, yeah. I, I just don't see the for me. It's uh, a hard 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 bullet. As well, but I, it's also hard. Bullet. I, I love I love Stat Boy. I, it's a hard bullet for me as well. I love Stat Boy, but looking at objectively, I don't see him being better than C. Oh well. <laughs> he'll be he'll probably be S again next week. What's All next right, week? We'll... Yeah. I I'm ironically over here like oh my yeah, gosh, yeah, Stepman's he... not an S. Finally. That's true. It happened, guys. Wait. He's... I think it was an S And we got Han and Horner to S for their first time too. That's I know. It's, a, it's a week of that's crazy new things. I guess the name really is relevant. Encroaching madness. Hmm. <laughs> Let's move on.